presented by Church Tech U, it's the Pro Presenter Show. On today's show, how to go to a specific playlist and slide with Companion in Pro Presenter 7. Hi and welcome again to the Pro Presenter Show. This is the show where I help you learn all about Pro Presenter. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. And before we get started, if you've ever needed to go to a very specific playlist and a very specific slide within that, and just have a button that you can go to at any time, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. So, this is actually prompted by a question that someone asked, and um, I can't remember where the question was, but it was in the last uh, month or two. And so I thought that I would go through this so that I could uh, help you do exactly what you need to do to go to a specific uh, playlist and presentation. So here we are in ProPresenter, and uh, the first thing that you need to know is that this will not just take you to a playlist and have it skip around in the Mac version. In the Windows version, it will, but let me show you exactly what I mean. So let's head over here. Uh, first off, if you need Companion, go to bitfocus.io. You'll need to make a login to download it, but once you do, you can... Uh, do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, add ProPresenter here, and I've already done that. And so let me just click on that. Yep, there we go. Now, in order to do this, we need to know some very specific information, and it's not really intuitive. So let me show you what I mean. Right here, we've got this question mark. And if you click on it, it will bring up all the stuff about the, uh, the companion module for ProPresenter. So what I want to do is go down here to specific slide. And that's a little bit of the downside of doing this. As I said, that it will take you to a specific slide, not necessarily to a specific playlist. I mean, you can say, hey, this playlist and then you have to decide what slide within that playlist so it's not just taking you to the playlist itself so with that in mind notice that the first thing it says here is that um, you can put in the slide number in the field I'll show you that here in a second you can do zero and zero will bring back the previous slide if it happened to be cleared or you can actually do a relative number. So plus three jumps forward three slides. Plus one jumps forward one slide. Now that's going to be important here in a second. Also, the presentation path lets you trigger a different presentation in a different playlist. So we need to figure out how to navigate through that. And let me just summarize all this stuff because I think that it's a little easier to see than, uh, than read. But if you're more of a reader, then go through that. So basically, we have all of our playlists here, and I've got a playlist folder right here. So I've got the first playlist, playlist folder, first playlist in the playlist folder, the second playlist in the playlist folder, and the third playlist here. Now, these are numbered starting with zero. I don't know why they're numbered starting with zero, but they are. So the first one is not one, but zero. So playlist, this first one is playlist zero. This uh, playlist folder is uh, also numbered starting with zero. So since this is the first playlist folder, it is actually, or it's right here the second item, it's actually number one. So to indicate that it is a folder, we follow it with a decimal point. So one decimal point. And then to get to this one right here, it would be zero. So one decimal point zero or one decimal point one will take you to this. If I wanted this one, I'd just put in zero. No decimal, no nothing. 
if I just wanted this one, I'd put in uh, two, three, four, etc. So, a little confusing to start off with. Now, how do I select these guys, these individual presentations? Again, numbered starting with zero. So, this is zero, one, two, three, four. And so, to separate between the um, the playlist and the presentation, we put a colon there. So one dot for the decimal point if you're going from a folder to a playlist. Uh, and two dots if you're going from a playlist to a specific presentation. So let me show you what that looks like. If we head back over here to my web browser, just going to command tab to get there. Okay, now if I go into buttons, and I think it's page 8. Yeah, nope, it was 9. Yep, here we go. I've already created a couple of them, and so let me show you what this uh, does. So this, I just typed in specific slide for its name, specific slide. So if we make my picture in picture go away, notice this is playlist folder one dot playlist zero colon and then the uh, presentation is one. Slide number is two. So let's go back to uh, ProPresenter and let me navigate. Remember, 1.0 colon 1. So 1.0 colon 1. And that takes me to here. If I wanted here, this one, I would do one period zero colon zero. So let's actually put that there. And this updates automatically. So, and then slide number two. There's nothing special about the slides. As I say, zero brings up a cleared one that was the same one you were on. One is slide one, two is slide two, plus one is the next slide. So, specific slide, and if I go back here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and actually tap on that button on my stream deck, and when I do that, I expect that we'll see this slide right here and I do. So that takes me to a specific slide in a specific playlist within a specific presentation, so playlist, presentation, slide. But how could I go to the next one? Because, let me show you why. Let's say that I'm here in 1, 2, 3, 4 on A Mighty Fortress is Our God and I click on that button again, it shows up, but it's just taken emphasis off. It doesn't show me there. Now on Windows, as I understand it, it does navigate to that. There are pluses and minuses to this. So if you wanted it to navigate to that, it would be nice if it would. But if you don't want it to, you want something in the background to happen, then it's a bummer that it doesn't. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, once again, I'm on this slide. If I want the next slide, I've got another button that does that. And this was the stuff that started uh, the tutorial on the YouTube version. So we'll see my nameplate here. So see that? So going back to this we can see that 
it just goes through the next one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if I want to go back to the beginning, I just hit that, and it takes me back to the beginning, and then next one, next one. So let me show you how I added the next button. So going back over here into Companion, I just call that next specific. You might want to give it a better name, and Again, same presentation path as this, so 1.0 0, colon 0, and, but instead of slide number being 0, I did slide number being plus 1. So whatever slide it is, it goes to the next one within this and only this presentation. So it will never go to the next presentation. Let me show you what that looks like. So starting over. I hit the button there, 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 and now it's stopped because it's only within this specific presentation, within this specific playlist here. So that is perhaps not what you want, but that's the best that Companion has to offer right now. But you could imagine uh, situations where this is really, really useful. So imagine that you have a lower third that needs to come up at a specific time. You don't want to distract the ProPresenter operator. So the director has a stream deck and just hits the pastor's lower third. And it doesn't seem to affect ProPresenter whatsoever. That would be one thing to do if you're on the Mac. If you're on Windows, maybe you want to start off service and it always starts with this one particular presentation. Well, you can start it off and then it will navigate to that and then the operator will be able to take over from there knowing exactly where he or she is. So, depending on the version, it will uh, do different things. I really wish it was the same or you had a checkbox to go one or the other, but Maybe that's something Dan Owen, who did most of the work, if not all the work, on the companion module can address sometime in the future. If you like this content, you'd probably like my ProPresenter 7 Quick Start course, so head on over to tvm.fyi slash pro, the number 7, and quick. Give me your name and email address there, and I can make a login for you for free. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford from TrinityDigitalMedia.com and ChurchTechU.com reminding you to go out and change eternity.